Sometimes in your plugins, you want things to repeat every so often, or you want the task to be delayed a certain number of seconds. In this video, we're going to dive into a simple way to achieve both of these. If you're new to Java, then you might struggle to follow along with my Minecraft tutorials. Don't worry though, I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by signing up for a free trial of Skillshare. This course has around 50 videos and nearly four hours of content that are all designed for the beginner. So if you're new to Java, then this is the perfect place to start. Go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment to sign up for free. Now you could do this manually every time you want to. However, I find it much easier to create new files within a utility folder or some other similar type of folder where we can go ahead and create a new instance of these delayed classes. So I'm gonna make a new Java class. This one is going to be called delayed task. And this class is going to implement listener. The first step is to create two different variables. The first one we could say private static plugin. We'll call this plugin and we'll assign this equal to null. We can then create a local property for this actual class, which will be private int ID and assign this equal to negative one. This is going to store the ID for our delayed task. So we could cancel if we want to. Now we're going to create three different constructors here. I could say public delayed task, and this is going to receive a plugin, which I'm going to call instance. And I can now say plugin equals instance. This way we have access to our plugin so we can actually create a delayed task in the future without worrying about passing in a plugin instance every single time. Now this constructor is only going to be ran once within our main class here. So in my case, that is one off case tutorial. Here we have on enable. Wherever you want, you can now just simply say new delayed task and pass in this. And this will now store an instance of this class within this class as a static variable. So that way we don't have to worry about it in the future. We always have access to the plugin. Next, we want to create two more constructors. So I can say public delayed task. This is going to take in a runnable. And then we're going to create one more. So public delayed task. This will also take in a runnable called runnable but we're also going to have a long, which will be called delay. Now within the second constructor, we can call this passing in runnable and a delay of zero. And within the last constructor, we can actually create a delay task to run our runnable function after the delay has occurred. So the first step is to say if plugin dot is enabled. If so, we want to actually delay this. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and just run the runnable instantly. So I can say runnable dot run. Now inside this first if statement, I can say ID equals bucket dot get scheduler dot schedule sync delayed task passing in a plugin and a runnable and a delay. Now keep in mind that this delay is in ticks. So if you want one second, that will be 20. If you want five seconds, that will be 100, etc. So now I'm going to head over to my handlers folder. And here I have a player handler where all of my player related events are going to go. One thing I want to do is I want to see whenever a player does take fall damage, I then want to give them an item. Obviously, it's not a very practical example, but it's fine for the demonstration of the delayed task. So here I can say at event handler public void on entity damage. And the actual event we want to listen for is the entity damage event. This will be fired whenever any entity is damaged. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the damaged entity is going to be a player and if they took fall damage. So here I could say if not with parentheses and inside I could say events.getEntity is an instance of a player and events.getCause is exactly equal to fall. Now if neither of these are the case we want to go ahead and return. So afterwards we know for sure that a player did take fall damage. So I can now gain access to that player by saying player player equals player of event.getEntity. And now I want to wait five seconds and then give them the diamond. So I can say new delayed task. I can pass in a runnable and then let's say 20 times five. I'm doing 20 times five so I can easily change this number here without worrying about it too much. And the 20 just represents how many ticks are in one single second. Now within this function here, we can now say player.getInventory.addItem passing in a new item stack, which will just give us a simple diamond. All right, so now I am in game. I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. And I took some fall damage. And after three seconds, I now have a diamond. If this tutorial is helping you, then consider helping me by leaving a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, then subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. So now it's working, but we still want to do a couple more things. For example, I could say public int get ID. I can go ahead and return ID. This way, if we want to cancel this, we can. For example, if I go back to the player handler, I can now say delayed task, call it task, and assign it equal to a new delayed task. I can now cancel this task with bucket.getscheduler.cancel task. And here it takes in a task ID, which is going to be task.getID. So now I'm going to go ahead and compile my plugin. So I'm making sure everything works here. I can take some fall damage and normally this would give me a diamond, but we're actually going to cancel the task after it starts. So now we don't get a diamond at all. And if you want to learn how to create your own custom GUI menus, then go ahead and click on this video here.